What is it that enables the couple? It's one thing, and I think increasingly, therapists who are skilled therapists, skilled couples therapists, we know how to create those kinds of moments with couples and help them, coach them into finding each other in our offices. What, have you, what are you finding about how do you help them to be able to do that, the key, the key element here, how do they take that home and being able to, that's part of their repertoire as a couple. What's involved there? And, and specifically, if you could, tell us how, how it is, what are the, um, the elements of that that are part of this process you're describing? Rich, I think it's really, it's about the fact that, um, you know, I can remember years back when I was learning to be a therapist, I used to have this argument with Neil Jacobson about homework, uh -huh. okay? And Neil Jacobson used to be enraged because couples didn't do their homework, uh -huh. right? And I said, nah, you know, I was a, a sassy graduate student, right? I really ticked him off, okay? And okay. I said, nah, you know, of course they don't do their homework because it doesn't mean anything to them, okay? Your exercises don't mean anything to them. But I think people will take out of the therapy session things that are emotionally meaningful to them that they're engaged with. So if they start to see their partner differently in the therapy session, right? And you can help them put that into words and integrate it. They can take it with them and they can put those glasses on when they're outside. Mm -hmm. Now that having been said, I wrote a book called Hold Me Tight and there's exercises at the end of the chapters, okay? Mm -hmm. So there are ways you can encourage your couples to spend time together. You can talk about what gets in the way how can he help her feel safe and open sexually, right? You can help her talk about her sexual needs. You can, you can, you know, suggest things to them. But I think the key thing is it's about emotional engagement. It's about that they have new experiences in your office that are so rewarding for them. They're so rewarding that they'll go and they'll, they'll move into them at home, right? There is nothing. There is nothing more rewarding for human beings on this planet than having this longing for connection and to be seen and held and feel safely connected, to have that responded to. People will seek that out again. I don't have to set it up. It's wired into your mammalian brain. And if that, gets te that emotional connection gets teamed up with sexuality, that's a, such a source of joy and comfort. People, when they glimpse it, they'll work, they'll do it outside, they'll try it outside, they'll work for it. Because it's, you don't have to condition it or coach it. It's, if you like, it's unconditioned. It's just who we are. We, we long for that. We do long for that. Do you find that if that happens, so it, there's no particular structure that people need, just it, as part of the process is they, is what you're saying is that if they have a, a one a, a moment like that, I mean, often couples, even if you're not a systematic couple studies, you might have a moment where cu people find each other. Those, those, those these are well, they need, they might need more than one moment. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So, but is is your is your basic idea is that if they are able to experience this with some regularity over some period of time in your office, you don't have to give them structures and and checklists and 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 uh, and as you say homework that your your experiences and your data seems to indicate that with some experience with you people quite naturally and spontaneously if, if that's the right word here are, are able to take this home with them these re these attachment uh, responses these hold me tight conversations you can have a hold me tight conversation around injuries and you can have a hold me tight conversation around sex. These basic conversations where both people are able to be open and responsive to each other, they are so powerful, they naturally generalize. What you do is you help couples talk about the blocks to taking them home, right? You just have to help them remove the blocks. You say, somebody will say, I can talk about this here that I'm a bit scared to try it at home. Mm -hmm. And you'll say, you'll look at the block to that. You'll say, what do you think is going to happen at home? Right? And that's 
you'll help them with the block to that and you'll help them talk about their fear and how their partner can help them with that fear right like I had one lady say when I turn and tell you I need to talk to you I need to know that you're going to give me your attention for a period of time I, I can't have you say yes and then after 10 minutes you say I've got to go and do my email mm -hmm. She says, it, I, it just freaks me out. I feel so bad. I feel like I've just opened up for you to hurt me again. Right? I can't do it. So he, she's able to say, I'm afraid of this, and it blocks me from doing this at home. And he's able to listen to it and say to her, okay, you know what? Maybe we need to have a special time mm -hmm. you know, when we can be together. And if you say to me, you know, I, I want to talk to you, you know, I'll make sure that I I will give us that time. I will give you that time. I will go turn my computer off even. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? Maybe that's the new sign of love in our society. I will turn yeah. my computer off 